Brianna. So as promised, this is going to be sort of the first part in an ongoing series talking about transition and maintenance and some of the tips that I have for you guys. Um, those of you who are either looking to start this program and you think, well, once I stop eating the food, I'm going to gain all my weight back or you're really unsure about how it works after you're done with your weight loss process. Um, this also could be uh, helpful to people that are already in maintenance and are struggling or people that are in transition and kind of don't know what happens after that sixth week of transition and then you're like, okay, now what? <laughs> so some of the tips that I have for you, um, somebody asked me on Facebook, how long did I transition for um, and what that looked like? So I knew that from doing my research and also just... Um, being exposed to people that had maintained and people that had transitioned uh, properly, that transitioning per their guidelines, you know, by the Metafast guidelines is really important because um, in the five and one, you are restricting your carbs. It's not, it's not a no carb program, but it is low carb. Um, it is controlled, what I like to call controlled carbohydrates. <laughs> So it's not like you're not getting any carbs at all because you are, but at the same time, if you've been on this program for a while, you want to give your body some time to adjust to reincorporating higher carb, you know, stuff like fruits and, um, and grains and whole grain pastas and breads and stuff like that. So I did follow the Metafast transition program. Um, it's, you can find the transition plan in your quick start guide. It's available online or um, through your coach or with your first order, you get your quick start guide and it'll lay everything out for you. Um, I did that because I think it's important, this is what happens usually. People get to like week two or week three sometimes and they get frustrated or they feel like, okay, I, already, I, I lost my weight already. I don't need to sit here and gradually add food back in. But there, there really is a reasoning for it, and for me personally, I think personally it had to do more with getting used to having more options, giving myself more options, and also getting used to, okay, so if I'm not eating five of my meals of Metafast a day, then what do those other meals look like? And, you know, I get a question a lot about, so what do I eat in maintenance? Most of my meals look like that kind of breakdown. You know, they're very lean and green style on my best days. I'm not going to lie. Okay. <laughs> on my best days, they're very lean and green style. And I think that's how you balance out any kind of higher calorie, higher fat foods that you're, you're choosing to eat in maintenance. That's how you balance it out is that you eat healthy most of the time. And I've, I've said that in other videos, so I, I don't want to kind of go over it that too much. But I did do the six weeks that they recommend. I warn you, by the fifth week, you're going to think you have it all down and you just want to eat whatever you want to eat. But I think part of it, too, is training yourself to have that restraint, even when the options are opened up. So I think the practice of restraint is really important and to realize that, yes, you can go have dessert if you want, but are you going to be eating dessert all the time and keeping your weight off? I don't know. I mean, it just depends on where you're kind of spending your calories every day. Um, the other thing that, that helps as you get closer to goal, and especially in transition and in maintenance, is to track your food intake. You can do that through the Metafast site, through the, um, the My Take Shape for Life phone app. You can track your food there or um, my favorite is the MyFitnessPal app because you can scan the barcode of whatever you're eating and it'll usually bring up the nutrition info and it's a great place to track and you can also track your workouts. So tracking your food is really important especially when you're first starting out maintenance because you are going to increase your calories up to the point where you stop losing weight but you kind of have to gauge Okay, on the days that I work out, how many calories can I eat to, to balance that out um, so that I'm not gaining but I'm not losing? And everybody's balance is going to be different, and it depends on the kind of activity you're doing, your age, your metabolism, 
I mean, all that good stuff. I don't have a one size fits all answer for you as far as what your maintenance calories are going to look like. Um, on my lowest days, I can have between 16 and 1800 calories a day on maintenance. And um, on the days that I was working out, especially when I was running, I could have 2000 calories, which is, you know, feels like a lot for me. But on the days that I was working out, it had to, you know, it had to be higher. Um, and also, too, you want to make sure that those calories are quality calories. Remember to um, keep your foods high quality. So remember to keep eating your high protein. Keep eating tons of vegetables, tons and tons of veggies, tons of um, nutrient-dense foods. That's really the way you're going to maintain easier is to keep your eating mostly clean and mostly healthy. Um, I think another thing is just to be honest with yourself. Some people stop weighing and maintenance and I think that that can be problematic. Um, one, get rid of anything that's bigger than the size that you are now. Get it out of your closet. Um, I just had a garage sale this past weekend and I made over $200 just selling my clothes. <laughs> Because I had so many clothes in all these different sizes and now, you know, I'm at goal, I'm a size 4, 6 on bottom, I'm a size extra small to small on top depending on the manufacturer um, and I needed to get that stuff out of my closet because if you give yourself room to go back, the likelihood is that you give yourself too much of a cushion and you might revert back to old habits. So I think... Um, what I've done is I've developed what I call a red zone. So my goal, I'm 5'1", and I started this program at almost 240 pounds, so I was morbidly obese. Um, and my healthy range for me personally is about 128 to 131. So that gives me a couple of pounds for bloating, sodium, if I ate out, all that kind of stuff. Um, water retention, whatever. All these lovely things that we go through. <laughs> Um, my red zone is 135. I know that if I hit 135, which has happened twice in the last six months, that it's time for me to really clean it up. And I don't go all the way back on program. What I try to do is be honest with myself about cleaning up my eating. So making sure that I'm not eating when I'm not hungry and, you know, that I'm making better choices and filling up my plate with veggies and lean protein. And um, I think that that's a good way to go. And the red zone, I think, also prevents you from, you know, gaining 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, everything back. Because if you're honest with yourself and you kind of develop a zone that makes you say, hey, okay, it's time for me to take a look at what I'm eating and um, have I fallen back into old habits? <coughs> it keeps you on the right track before you really have to work so hard to get down to the goal that you work so hard to get to. Um, the other thing is I also watch any kind of creeping of bad habits that come back. For example, one that I always have to watch with myself, I have a toddler who sometimes doesn't always finish his food. Now, when I was on 5 and one without a question, I never went and ate off of his plate after he was done. But now that I'm in maintenance, it's something that I really have to watch because I noticed that I was starting to finish his food. And maybe overall it doesn't hurt me on a daily basis, but I mean, over time, finishing his food every day for the next three, four years, that's going to cause some weight to creep back up. So keep in mind those little bites, picks, little licks, taste bites that you're kind of grabbing throughout the day. Maybe you grab a piece of candy, maybe you take a couple bites off your husband's plate and then you take a couple of bites off of your toddler's plate because he didn't finish and then you're having a soda and then you're doing this and then you're having some cheese and pretzels. You know, that kind of stuff can really add up. So keep it honest, keep it healthy, and uh, I'm sure you'll have no problems with transition and maintenance. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.